Watching our mid-morning edition of Arirang News on this Thursday, April 9th, coming to you live from Seoul, I'm Shin Se Min. Before we begin, these are the stories we're following at this hour. After numerous delays because of the coronavirus, the new school year has begun in South Korea for certain grades of middle and high schoolers. However, they won't be with their friends in the classroom. It's all online due to these safety considerations. The coronavirus pandemic is taking an enormous toll on global economy. The World Trade Organization warns that global commerce could collapse by as much as 32 percent this year. That's almost 9 percent of global GDP. Plus, Bernie Sanders drops out of the race for the White House again. It clears Joe Biden's path to the Democratic nomination and a showdown with President Trump in November. Our starting point this morning, the unprecedented start of a new school year here in South Korea. Following repeated postponements due to the coronavirus pandemic, the new school year is finally beginning this Thursday for middle and high school seniors, although they will be learning from home. Now, as this is an extraordinary move for the nation, there are still questions regarding technical stability, especially as it was pushed through so quickly. Our Kim Hyo-sun starting us off. While seniors of middle and high schools are starting school on Thursday via online classes, there are continued concerns about whether the never-tried mass online experiment will run without a hitch. Even until a day before restarting the new semester, the state-run educational broadcasting system carried out an in-depth test of its server, which had technical glitches in the process of expanding its capacity. It's true that we're still concerned about stability, the service capacity and support system when connections surge exponentially. Schools are also busy preparing for the start of the online classes. They have been repeatedly checking whether all students have smart devices at home. Schools have to make sure the devices are the latest models so students can take online lectures and that families with two or more kids have enough of them. Many schools are limiting two-way classes due to the capacity of the infrastructure, with the majority of them offering educational content provided by EBS. Online classes are realistically impossible for students with disabilities who go to special education schools. On April 16th, school will be starting for all grade levels, excluding first and second graders in elementary school. A bit of trial and error seems inevitable, as nearly 5.5 million students will be connecting to a relatively small number of servers at the same time. Kim Yo-san, Arirang News. Exactly 100 days have passed since the WHO was first notified about the outbreak of COVID-19 in China. Since then, over one and a half million people around the world have been infected, according to the latest figures from Johns Hopkins University. Now, despite the number of deaths closing in on 90,000 worldwide and the growing criticism, especially from U.S. President Donald Trump over its role in managing the spread, the head of the WHO has listed the steps the U.N. agency has taken to contain the virus. He said the WHO's, quote, unwavering commitment has been to serve all all people of the world with equity, objectivity and neutrality. And the agency will continue to solely focus on that in the days, weeks and months ahead. And the death toll in Europe from COVID-19 continues to rise at an alarming rate. And it's not only taking tens of thousands of lives, but also severely hurting the economy. Our Kan young reports. The number of COVID-19 cases in Europe has surpassed 700,000. According to the Coronavirus Resource Center at Johns Hopkins University, the death toll in Europe has neared 60,000. The pandemic is also damaging the European economy. The German Economic Research Institute, IFO, said that the country's economy, the largest in Europe, is likely to shrink 9.8% in the second quarter. That will be the biggest downturn since 1970, and more than double the decline seen during the 2008-09 global financial crisis. The coronavirus pandemic is triggering a dramatic recession in Germany. Financial activities have shrunk massively. The institute added it was due to the lockdown measures established to slow the spread of the coronavirus. 
According to the Bank of France, the French economy entered a recession with an estimated 6% contraction in GDP in the first quarter of the year, the country's worst performance since 1945. The French central bank said economic activity plunged 32% in the last two weeks of March amid the nationwide lockdown to fight the virus. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank has told the Eurozone finance ministers that the region may need fiscal measures of up to 1.5 trillion euros, about 1.6 trillion US dollars, to tackle the economic crisis. The European Commission has urged EU member states to maintain a ban on non-essential travel into the bloc's passport-free zone until at least May 15th to contain the spread. Kanyu Arirang News. The World Trade Organization predicts global trade could plummet by almost a third due to the COVID-19 pandemic, describing the coming pain as comparable to that of the Great Depression. During a virtual briefing on Wednesday, the head of the WTO said the pandemic has upended the global economy and international trade. In the WTO's most pessimistic case, the volume of global commerce could drop as much as 32 percent this year, but with the possibility of rebounding 24 percent in 2021. A 32 percent drop could cause global GDP to shrink by up to 8.8 percent in 2020. The WTO also says keeping markets open to international trade and investment will help economies recover more quickly. Now this just coming in moments ago, the Bank of Korea has kept its benchmark interest rate unchanged at 0.75% for the month of April. Now this follows the central bank's decision last month to slash rates at an emergency meeting called as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. And that decision today likely to have come as the central bank opted to monitor the impact of the current measures already imposed by the government. The Monetary Policy Board will also come up with measures to boost market liquidity. And we'll have more details around that in our later newscast at noon Korea time. Now, the race for the U.S. Democratic nomination looks to be over as Bernie Sanders announces his withdrawal. Now, that leaves former Vice President Joe Biden as the presumptive nominee to take on President Trump in November 3rd election. Our Chang Taehyun with more. Bernie Sanders, the senator of Vermont, has announced his withdrawal from the race for the Democratic nomination for this year's U.S. presidential election. I have concluded that this battle for the Democratic nomination will not be successful. And so today, I am announcing the suspension of my campaign. Sanders suspended his campaign on Wednesday U.S. time. In a live stream speech, he said that victory is virtually impossible. The 78-year-old started with an early lead in the Democratic race, but began to fall behind after moderate Democrats supported Biden in South Carolina. It's the second time Sanders has failed to win the Democratic nomination, having previously withdrawn in the 2016 primaries against Hillary Clinton. Sanders decided to halt his campaign and support Biden after seeing the current president deal poorly with the COVID-19 outbreak in the U.S. Today, I congratulate Joe Biden, a very decent man, who I will work with to move our progressive ideas forward. And now, the showdown between Biden and Trump begins. A poll by Real Clear Politics on Thursday showed Biden a six-point lead over Trump, but there are still plenty of twists and turns before November's presidential election. Chang Taehyun, Arirang News. Starting today, people in South Korea will no longer have official information on which political party or candidate is in the lead until the evening of the April 15th general election. The National Election Commission has banned opinion poll results from being made public until next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Korea time. Now that means political parties cannot disclose the results of the public opinion polls, although they can conduct them for reference. Media outlets also cannot cite the official poll numbers until 6 6 p.m. on election day. The election watchdog says the results of public opinion polls conducted on April 8th can still be cited on Thursday, then nothing until election day. 
When South Korea's National Assembly passed an electoral reform bill at the end of last year, the legal voting age here in the country was lowered to 18 from the previous 19. Although the 18-year-old voters here in the nation account for a tiny fraction of all voters, it's still significant that high school students will be able to vote for the first time next Wednesday at South Korea's 21st general election. Our Kim Dami tells us more. Giving youngsters a voice in the democratic process. 18-year-olds will be able to cast ballots for the first time in South Korean history next week. Those born on April 6, 2002 or earlier can vote in the April 15 general elections. 18-year-olds account for just over 1% of all voters. The absolute number is not that big, but they may emerge as a new variable as it's the first time that high school students here will be able to vote. I'm concerned and nervous that I have to make a wise decision. But as a voter, I feel I'm officially a part of our community. For young voters as a whole, it's a great opportunity to select the representatives who will work for our communities. Young voters' political participation is also expected to bring extra youthfulness to local politics and boost younger generations of political clout in their communities. By reflecting younger generations' political ideals, we can secure justice between generations in this aging society with such a low birth rate. Young voters can and should strengthen their judgment skills and abilities through discussions including diverse perspectives. To prevent the politicization of classrooms and to better guide young voters, the National Election Commission initially planned to visit and educate all high school voters ahead of the election. However, with the COVID-19 crisis postponing the spring semester, local governments and schools turned to more accessible, approachable ways to teach young voters. We try to make the learning process as simple as possible. Our videos have Q&As on proper election campaigning, things voters should keep in mind, and a detailed outline of the voting process at polling stations. To encourage teenage voters to participate in democracy in the midst of this pandemic, South Korea's Education Ministry also plans to share election materials on the National Election Committee website. Kim Dami, Arirang News. Good morning. We'll continue to see temperatures seesawing several degrees below norms with wide temperature gaps between lows and highs. And you know, big temperature swings and dry conditions mean uh, it's very easy to catch a cold, so take care of yourself. In fact, in Seoul, we've been under a dry weather warning for nine straight days, and that's the longest period since 2004. So stay hydrated by drinking at least eight glasses of water a day and also be careful if you have to handle fire. Top readings will be similar to yesterday, hovering in the mid to upper teens, and we'll see sunny skies and clean air in most parts of Korea. Speaking of which, many cities around the world are seeing much better air quality these days. The East Coast might see light showers from late afternoon into tonight, but it's not going to be enough to ease the dryness. And rain is also in the forecast for Jeju and Korea's south and east coast through Sunday. That's Korea for you, and here's the international weather for your around the globe.
That does it for us at this hour on Narirang News, but we'll be back to bring you live coverage of coronavirus briefing by South Korean health authorities at 11 Korea time, so do join us again then. Thank you for watching and goodbye.